Thank you, Madam Chairman, for the opportunity of speaking today. AU members and more welcome guests. Uh, this afternoon I'm going to talk about the evidence of low frequency variability in the North American monsoon region with focus on multi-year droughts as diagnosed by the 20th century analysis. The motivation behind this study is to gain a better understanding of the North American monsoon system based on a multi, uh, multi, uh, multiple data size approach to reduce and bridge the gap between observation, payload climate reconstruction, and modeling simulation. The importance of this study is based on the need to improve capacity to diagnose uh, causes of drought variability in the past and um, project how they will uh, project uh, how they will be here in the future to formulate uh, climate adaptation strategies. In this respect, uh, Griffin et al. work has shown something very relevant for the long-term variability of drought using terrain chronologies in the southwest uh, region. They found that there ex exists a, a dual summer and winter season coherent co-variability that can characterize simultaneously the deficits of winter precipitation and the failure of monsoon, uh, monsoon precipitation. However, they also show the relevance, a uh, three relevance caveat on, on the sources of these uh, low frequency variabilities. First, it might be possible that this be connected with the tree physiology related to the root of the mass growing, and uh, also the standardization procedure of the ring with time series. And um, finally, uh, a true low frequency variability in the climate region system. Our work focuses on supporting the, the, the third point. Recently, Carrillo et al. provide additional evidence to support the existence of this low frequency variability in the southwest. Using the same Turing chronology data set for winter and summer, we were able to reproduce or represent the our characteristic that this low frequency variability is in the order of 50 to 100 years. Uh, that can be shown in the power spectrum on the left for the summer and for winter, and also for the time series on the right. And when the major documenting drought of the four uh, centuries are superimposed in this time series on the right, which I show with the arrows, since that this low frequency variability is the major modulators, the major modulation of the stream drought. And also, as in Griffin et al., the summer and winter signal are coherent, coherently in phase. Uh, therefore, in this study, we want to answer one question. If it's possible that the drought variability in the southwest identified by the Turing chronology can be determined or confirmed by an independent data set. In this case, we take an alternative approach which is going to be using a dynamical long scale modeling framework. The short answer for this question is yes. However, in the rest of the talk, I'm going to provide the evidence. A major data set used in this study are observed precipitation, the 20th century analysis and a version of the dynamic long scale from this 20th century analysis. The precipitation data set has been standardized using the standard precipitation in this approach, or SPIs. But for simplicity of the talk, SPI, SPIs are going to be seen as a precipitation. Also, we use moisture flood conversions, which characterize the, the moisture uh, transport in the whole atmospheric column for the 20th century analysis. And the core of the analysis has been done with the multi-taper method single bulk decomposition or NTN-SVD. This NTN-SVD is a similar technique as an EOF analysis or empirical orthogonal function because this is a reduction technique. But also it has difference. For example, EOF analysis is going to add over the temporal domain and NTN-SVD is going to add over, over the frequency domain. This last characteristic, acting over the frequency domain, is very important to diagnose the, the low frequency signal in the data set. To characterize the temporal variability of our data set, we're going to use power spectrum, and in some part, the talk is going to refer to the local fractional variance, which is as a process of NT and SBD approach. But for simplicity, also 
local fraction of the variance is going to be seen as a power spectrum. This slide show uh, the anti-phase relationship, relationship in precipitation between northern Mexico and southern Mexico. This anti-phase relationship is more evident on the decadal case, scale as we get to the Mendes and Mayangan. So we are going to expand on this idea, but moving a little further. So we are going to move a little further, trying to compare the anti-phase relationship in the low frequency regime between the southwest, southwestern United States and Central America. To answer our research question, we are going to use a similar technique what we have been done for the uh, Turing study. Uh, however, uh, although we know that the 20th century analysis started in 1871, as we highlighted in the orange book at the top time series, we still expect that in our analysis we can characterize some phases of this low frequency variability. Instead of precipitation, we are going to use uh, the moisture flood conversion and the field on the right show the, the variability, sorry, the variance of the moisture flood conversion and there you can see a maximum in Central America which I highlight with the red box with the letter CA for Central America. And to the, the complete variability inside the box for the whole data set is shown in the time series below which, where I have superimposed the 10 year running mean average to simulate the low frequency variability. There you can, be, you can distinguish three different peaks. One in the 1890s, there's another peak in the 1920s, and there's another peak in the 1950s. If you compare the time series below with the time series at the, at the top with the Turing chronology, you can see that the relationship is, in, is out of phase in the same way that Mendes and Magaña suggest. In the time series at the right, I had the previous time series I showed before. But in the left, I had a composite analysis for, for this moisture flood conversion. At the top is for the drought on, on Central America for the periods of 1917 until 1932. And at the bottom, I had for the pluvial in Central America, which correspond to the periods of 1942 to 1952 for this low frequency regime. If you see the anti-symmetry of these two, of these two uh, composite analyses, these are suggesting that this variability in Central America is part of a large scale process in the low frequency regime. And just to compare, or just to diagnose the, the proper signal of the moisture flow, com, com, moisture flow conversion, I'm going to repeat the same analysis, but now using the precipitation from the 20th century analysis. Uh, the time series now on the right is over the same, over the same domain, and you can see still there the pluvia the drought, and the pluvial next in those boxes. However, instead of using just the composite analysis, I had to be sure that this variability that we are suggesting is part of the dominant mode variability in the entire data set. So now we are going to characterize the low frequency variability for the entire data set of the ntn SVD, of the motion flight conversion using the technique uh, I, had cho I had mentioned before, which is the uh, uh, the uh, NTN SPD. So this figure, this slide show three different plots, which are the subproducts of the multi-taper metal single bodies in composition. The figure with number one is the local fractional variance. The figure number two is the reconstructed spectral, uh, spatial pattern for frequency higher than 10 years. And the figure number three is the, is the reconstructed temporal pattern for frequency higher than, than 10 years. Now, in the figure number one, we can see that the power, uh, power spectrum is showing variability that can go from 10 years to 50 years. And the figure in number three is uh, just showing the same variability that we showed before with the composite analysis over Central America. However, the figure number two is showing that this spatial variability is part of the large scale process. Well, now, well, uh, Sorry, now what we, uh, we need to is provide is information about how this impact over the continental scale. So to see what is going to happen on the continental uh, United States, what we did is uh, the dynamical downscale, the whole 140 years of the 20th century analysis. But before showing how much value uh, is adding this dynamical downscale on the continental region, I'm going to show a similar analysis on the show before, but now with observed precipitation. And this data set started in 18, 
1895 until the present. So the same, the same analysis, the figure number one is going to show the local fraction of variant spectrum from precipitation. The figure number two is going to show the spatial pattern of the, the spatial reconstructed pattern of precipitation for frequency higher than 10 years, and the figure number three is going to show the reconstructed temporal pattern of precipitation for frequency higher than 10 years. And the figure number one, we only, we see that we uh, can only resolve variability in the order of 15 years with observed precipitation. And this is confirmed with the time series below, which all a strong decade of variability. And in the figure number two, we, although we can resolve the CISO pattern between the Southwest and Central United States, the inverse relationship between North, uh, Northern Mexico and Southern Mexico is not well resolved with this data set. Even there is an abrupt transition, or a, a broad gap in the border between Arizona and Northern Mexico. Well, now I will show you the same analysis, but with the dynamic allowance scale 20 century analysis there. And now I'm showing the analysis for both seasons, for the summer and for the winter. In the similar way, the figure number one is showing the power spectrum of the summer precipitation. And there I highlight now that we can resolve more variability. And this variability is consistent with the variability we have shown for the uh, motion flash conversion from the 20th century analysis data set. In the figure number two, I have the reconstructing a spatial pattern for winter, for summer on the left, and for winter on the right. In this figure, I can see that this, the spatial pattern over the southwest for winter and summer are in phase. Also, the anti fair relationship between northern Mexico and southern Mexico is conserved according with what suggested by, uh, by Mendes and Magaña. And finally, in figure number three, I am showing the reconstructed pattern for the low frequency variability for frequencies higher than, than 10 years for both season. Uh, in, for, the, for the summer season, I have it in the blue line, and for the winter season, it's in the red line. Most important message for this slide is that the winter and summer season are in phase. In a similar way, we have been seeing is happening with the Turing chronology data set for the Southwest. Uh, I would like to uh, end my presentation just restating the research question. It is possible that uh, the drought variability, as we observe with Turing chronologies, can be determined with an independent data set. So the question of this answer is yes. Also, we have demonstrated that the 20th century analysis contains variability in the order of the low frequency regime, which is in the order of 10 years and longer. And finally, using the dynamical downscale, the winter precipitation and the summer precipitation in the continental scale is able to be reproduced uh, with, relationship, with relationship or with this variability. And with that, I will, I will thank for your attention. Okay, the rational model what we are using are, is the WARF models. And some details on this uh, are that they are, the scale resolution is uh, 50, 50 kilometers, yes. And the model has been run in a continuous simulation, so we start with the initial condition above in the 1871, uh, we have been feeding the model every six hours. Also, if you are interested in using this data set, it's available. We can, our group can distribute and share the data set. Okay, thank you. <laughs>